Hey guys, welcome back to our segment routing traffic engineering series. In the past couple of episodes, we went ahead and talked about TILFA. In this episode, we will go ahead and do some hands-on around TILFA. We'll see how we can go ahead and configure TILFA into our topology. And how do we go ahead and or how the TLFA computes the backup path into our topology. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the our very first example or the very first type of TILFA, which is zero segment, if you recall from the past episode. So just a quick refresher, uh, to reach to a P node, a prefix Z level is used to get to a P node. Hopefully you remember that. And to get to a Q node, you would need to, or the need system makes use of the adjacency SID. So simply a prefix Z level is used to get to the P node while an adjacency SID label is used to get to the Q node. So with that understanding, we will go ahead and do some hands-on around the zero segment example. So to we kind of went through, again, to simply turn on the TLFA, you would just simply need to go under your ISIS. In our case, we are just using ISIS the routing protocol. You go under the respective interface, go to the address family, and then we need to go ahead and turn on two commands, fast read out per prefix and fast read out per prefix TILFA. So what these commands are telling, okay, hey, we can enable a TILFA either based on a prefix or based on a link. For our case, we will be using based on prefix. And for that prefix, we are using TILFA based computation or the algorithm to find those alternate path into our topology. So that is the reason we need to use both of these commands. And once this is turned on, uh, the system would go ahead and compute the backup path. And those backup paths are available in case the failure happens. Those paths can be quickly installed into our topology. That is the reason we say, okay, in the case of TLFA, the failover is like less than 50 milliseconds around. Also, another important thing, when we are trying to configure this fast reroute, we configure this fast reroute on a link for which we are trying to figure out a backup path. So these are the couple things that we need to keep in mind and go from there. So with that, let's go ahead and jump onto the hands-on. So let me go back and turn on to our topology. So this is the topology that we are using. We have router uh, one, this is router two, this is router three. So in this case, the think of a router one as our source router and router two will be our destination. That means to reach from router one to router two, Router 1 will always use this top link because it's the shortest path, you know. So it will always try to pick this particular path. So this is our primary path. So that means we are trying to find a backup path in this topology if anything happens to our primary path. So that means if this link happened to fail, our backup path would be this link. And from router 1 using this link reach to router 3 and from router 3 use this link to traverse to the router 2. That means this will become our potential backup path. So in this case, we will go ahead and see how that really works. And this is a new topology that I built, so I'm not sure, guys, if I have any SR config already. Okay, so I do not have any segment routing configured on any of these three nodes. So let me go ahead and quickly do that. So I went ahead and usually keep this template ready because sometime I forget. So let me go ahead and do that configuration here. So this is our node one. So we are assigning a prefix set of one here. Let's commit the change, come out. And if you do the show MPLS forwarding, okay, now we have started building up the MPLS forwarding. Let's go log into our router number two also here and quickly take a look at show MPLS forwarding. Okay, I do not think we have the SR configured here. No, so let's go ahead and push the template here too. So the template is basically configuring the segment routing global block. You should all know this by this time. And this is our node 2. So let's go ahead and prefix it of 2 here. Commit the change. Let's go ahead and verify. Show, sorry. Show MPLS forwarding. And yes, now we do see our first link prefix it, 16001. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing. Turn on the SR on router 3. And yeah, I do not have configure on this router also. So let's go ahead and commit the change. And the prefix set that we will use for this will be prefix set three, commit the change. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our forwarding table. Okay, so in the forwarding table, we do see both of our prefix set as well as quite a few number of our adjacency set. 
So now if we go back to our router number one, let me go back to our router number one. And from router number one, if I go ahead and take a look at the, let's see if we can reach the router number two first quickly. So ping 192, 168.0.2, we can, let's verify same thing for three. So now at this stage, if I quickly switch back to our uh, PPT, if you see here, okay, here we have this command show ISIS IPv4 fast reroute to a particular IP and detail. So to see if do we have any backup pathology or not. So we can go ahead and do the same command show ISIS, show ISIS IPv4, okay. And then we are looking for a fast reroute and we let's say the fast reroute we are looking for 192.168.0.2 slash 32 and let's look for detail. So at this stage, what the system is saying, okay, hey, to reach this guy, I am using this interface, which is gig 000, which happens to be our top link. And to reach that label, to reach this guy, it is not using any label, okay. And if you see right now, the weight is simply zero. That indicates it's a zero segment. And there are no backups configured as of right now. That means if this link happened to fail, there are not no TILFA backup path. Now, if this link fails, then we are relying on the our IGP convergence primarily. So now we are expecting our IGP will go ahead and figure out a new path and using that path, we will go ahead and route our traffic. And that convergence could take time. As you know, all different IGP protocol have different convergence time. And to avoid all that kind of computation, we want to use a TILFA. So what we want to do, we want to go ahead and recalculate our backup path in case this path fails. We are not relying on IGP to converge. But moreover, we will go ahead and fall back to our backup path. And that's what we're going to go ahead and do that. So we kind of verified here, okay, hey, we do not have any, we do not have any backup path configured. So let's go ahead and quickly take a look at one more command. And that is the using the show Ceph command. So if I go ahead and run the same thing, show Ceph for 192.168.0.2 slash 32. And again, if you see, there is only one path, there is no backup path or any sort of uh, that particular nature here. So the very first thing that we need to do here is we need to go ahead and turn on the TILFA. And to turn on the TILFA, we just talked about, you go under your ISIS, you go under the respective interface, you go under the address family, and then you will go ahead and enable these two commands, fast read out based on per prefix and based on we want to use the TILFA. So let's go ahead and start using that. So now, if you go ahead and take a look at show run our ISIS, the link that we are interested in in gig 00. So now let's go to our ISIS 1 and then we go gigabit interface Ethernet 000 and then we go under address family IPD for minicast. And if you quickly press a question mark here, you will see the command that says fast readout. Configure fast readout. Yes, we are interested in configuring the fast readout. And with the fast readout, we have two options based on per link or based on per prefix. So we are interested in doing a computation based on per prefix instead of a per link. So we'll say per prefix and press enter. Now with the per prefix, if you go ahead and do up arrow and press a question mark, you can say, hey, you can do a couple different things. And in this case, we are interested in doing this per prefix calculation based on the TILFA. So I'll go ahead and enable TILFA. And I'll just simply go ahead and press enter and commit the change. And if you quickly take a look at the ISIS configuration again for this interface under ISIS for our interface gigabit ethernet 0 which is the interface between our node 1 and node 2 this particular link we went ahead and configured a fast reroute and that fast reroute again is based on the TILFA now if you go ahead and take a look at some of the things that we ran so the very first command if I go ahead and run if you see the show ISIS IPv4 fast readout for this particular and if you go ahead and press a detail here. Now if you notice here that okay hey uh, to go to this particular uh, path now this was the original path okay now if you see we have an automatically a backup path was calculated this is based on LFA okay an important thing to pay attention is this here which is weight is zero and if you remember weight is zero indicates what guys that this is a zero segment TI LFA example or this is primarily zero segment that means we are not adding any extra labels here if the, this link between node 1 node 2 fail and node 1 needs to reach the node 2 we are not adding any extra segments or instructions here primarily 
and that's what you continue to see if you see the label of for the backup path is still 16002 we have not added anything extra over here and that indicates okay hey to reach this it will be going via this particular router so which is our router number three here so now let's take a look at the show ceph command here that will give us a little bit more detail now if you take a look at in the show ceph here it say it shows a couple of the things again here so this was our primary path again now if you take a look at this is the backup path so it says okay hey if we have to reach this guy means 192 slash 32 if our primary path fails you take this path okay and this path is via gigabit ethernet 001 that means this other link use this other link okay and if you see the weight again zero guys here again weight zero indicates what that this is again zero segment and this clearly says okay hey this is a backup path which was calculated by local lfa and in this case you can see the label being imposed is same 16002 that means we are not adding any extra instructions means no additional labels so that means no additional labels that means no additional p or q information no additional p or q space any of those things and that clearly indicate okay this is an example of our tlfa zero segment we have not added any segment and now because the backup path is already calculated if our primary path fails system don't have to do any kind of a further calculation or don't have to rely on igp to figure out a path there is already a pre-calculated path and if this primary path fails it will fall back to this path very quickly and because it falls back to very quickly that is the reason we are saying this is sub you know like 50 millisecond or so now there are a few other commands that uh, let's see if there is any other command that we can go ahead and run here to quickly take a look at we already ran the isipv4 command again if you see here this is the example it says okay hey the weight really indicates a zero segment lfa and that's what we verified here in our output that okay hey the weight here really indicates it is a zero lfa and for if you are running ospf you can use the other command now we also ran the show ip ceph command so the show ip ceph command again here you know per prefix it to destination that's what we saw okay hey this is our destination prefix 16002 that means the label is not changed or there is no extra instruction were added for it to make it work so that's the reason there is a zero segment primarily and again here the weight is zero there is no extra destination so these are clearly indication of the zero segment now we can also go ahead and take a look at the mpls forwarding table so let's go ahead and take a look at show mpls forwarding label so in this case the label is 16002 and let's take a look at the detail for that particular label so if you go ahead and take a look at okay for it says uh, this is the primary path and now here is the backup path and you can say okay it is pure your uh, backup so that means if we have our primary link happens to fail we can still fall back to the secondary link that's what we say the prefix set to destination so this is our prefix set to the destination 16002 and nothing is again added that's the reason it's a zero segment lfa srmpls backup path and again there are a couple ways you do not see any extra label being added so no instructions and nothing is getting changed and weight is primarily zero so as you can see guys it is pretty easy to configure tlfa the only thing what we had to do that we went to our igp on this router one and we said okay for this link which is our gig zero we want it to calculate a alternate path which needs to be loop free primarily and that's what we went ahead and did that under our sorry show run router show run router isis and that's what we went ahead and configured under our gigabit we said okay hey we want to configure a fast reroute based on per prefix you can turn on based on per link also majority of the deployment focuses around the prefixes not about the links really and then we say okay hey if when you're using the per prefix we want to use that tilfa based computation so once we turned on before we turned on this functionality we did not had any backup paths if you remember that's what when we started there was no backup path primarily so once we configured tlfa we could see system went ahead and figured out a backup path and that backup path had simply weight zero that indicated it is a zero segment that means it is not adding any extra instructions or labels so that means no more extra p or q and you know those labels or any other information and our labels remain same so this is an example of zero segment tilfa guys 
Again, you know, if you have any questions, you know, go ahead and read through the slide deck posted on segment-routing.net. Thanks to these guys for putting such a wonderful material. And again, you know, do some hands-on around to understand the TLFA concept. So this will be all for this particular episode. In the next episode, we will go ahead and continue our hands-on around one segment TLFA. Okay. So that'll be all for this episode. I will see you guys in next episode. Thank you.